Okay, this is Cool Dude Clem here with a final video on Adventures in Linux Mint. Now, this is just going to be a quick voiceover type video. So, anyway, I've tested a whole bunch of stuff running on Linux Mint, and have I made up my choice of whether I should make the switch to Linux or not? Well, I have made up my mind, and the answer is no. Bet you didn't see that one coming. So first off, I'm going to talk about games. Now, using Wine, I was able to get about 7 out of 9 Windows games to work, including Sonic World, which didn't work at first, but then I did some tweaking in Play on Linux according to what I found on YouTube, and uh, I got that game working, with some other complications as well. And some of the games that I played on Wine actually had controller vibration, when I didn't get that when I played them on Windows. So that's another point for Linux right there. The only two games I tried that didn't work were Monster Truck Madness 2 and Midtown Madness. Come to think of it though, my webcam is a Microsoft product and that didn't work either. So the only three Microsoft products I tried didn't work. Hmm. On the emulation side of things, I found some pretty good emulators. I found one emulator that can emulate the Game Boy, and the Game Boy Advance, and the NES, and the Super Nintendo. And a really good thing about that is there was no controller lag. So when I press a button on the gamepad, the game responds immediately. And the character on the screen would do it as soon as I pressed the button. As for Nintendo 64, well, I could only find one emulator, but surprisingly, this emulator could play Beetle Adventure Racing without all those glitches that Project 64 had. There were still a few minor graphic glitches, but nothing that made the game unplayable like it was on Project 64. Now, one program that I found that I really needed was Anti-Micro. Now, what this is, is it basically does the same thing as XPadder on Windows. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, it allows you to use your gamepad as a mouse or a keyboard, so, I can do things like move the mouse pointer with the right thumbstick and things like that. And that's really useful for games that don't have very good, you know, controller support. Now, as for video editing, I tried this product called Kden Live, and I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with it. I like the way I can use my files directly from the camera without having to convert them first like I had to do with Adobe Premiere 6.5, but of course, there is always something. For instance, the transitions don't fill the whole screen. Like you can see here, I've added a transition between two different scenes, and you can see, if we go through frame by frame, it's not filling the whole screen. It should be, but it isn't. And look at this. The pop-up hints show in white text on a yellow background. How are you supposed to see that? And now we're getting into the things that are just turning me away from Linux. Now, on one of the emulators I downloaded, RetroArch, this can emulate a bunch of different systems, but in order to play certain games, I need to put BIOS files in its system directory, apparently. However, I've Googled and Googled and Googled and Googled how to do that. There's lots of stuff how to install it, but nothing on where you put the BIOS files. I've got the BIOS files, but I don't know where to put them. I mean, I've gone through pretty much every single folder and I cannot find it. I cannot find this RetroArch system folder where I'm supposed to put the BIOS files. And that leads me on to another thing. Now, I do like how you can simply type a command into the terminal, you know, sudo apt get install whatever, and it will download and install the program, you know, no mess, no fuss. And there's also the repository where you can install things pretty easily. But if I want to install them again on another Linux, should I want to use it in the future and those aren't available anymore? Well, I'm kind of stuck right there. Now, on Windows, you could download an executable, or a zip, or something like that, and you could store that onto a flash drive, or whatever somewhere, you know, for future use. So, 
If that program does become unavailable in the future, you still got it and you can still install it. But here on Linux, well, you tell me how to save those. At least when you install something on Windows, trying to find the program's executable or whatever, you know, it's not a complete essay to find, you know? Another thing with the terminal is if you're trying to download something that doesn't exist anymore, or something from a URL that's changed, well, if you make one single spelling mistake or you don't know what to type in, well, good luck. The only thing I found that comes close are dev files, and I actually like these because you download those and you get a file that you can copy into your USB drive or whatever, so you can save it for future use. And what these do, as far as I can tell, is install programs. You know, like on Windows. So, you double click on one, it installs a program, it installs any other dependencies that the program might need, and it's pretty much done right there and then. So you could copy that onto a flash drive, so you've still got it, and you can still install it, should that program become unavailable sometime in the future. But you cannot do that with anything that you've downloaded from the terminal or the repository. But sometimes, you get something like a tar GZ, which you could save onto a flash drive for future use, you know, like a zip file, because that's basically what they are, and you open it, and it's just the source code. Sometimes you'll get something that you can run, but nine times out of ten, it's only available as source code, and you've got to compile that yourself. What the hell? Why don't they release everything pre-compiled? I don't know how to compile a program. When I download something, I expect to be able to use it right out of the box. I don't expect to have to do anything else with it in order to use it, except maybe tweak some settings, you know, Stuff that ordinary humans can figure out without having to Google the hell out of everything. I mean, here I did find something in a tar GZ file that could be run, but all the same, I'm not a programmer, you know? Oh, now you decide to fly. Now, before I go on, this is not a video bashing Linux, all right? I would love to make the switch, but it is just not for me, okay? I've become too dependent on Windows programs and the ways of doing things on Windows that this is an alien world that I'm just not all that comfortable in. So, on to the big question. Could I install Adobe Premiere 6.5? And of course, the answer to that is a resounding no. I tried Wine, I tried Play on Linux, and then I found something called VMware Player, which I thought was another thing like Wine, but apparently that's just a virtual machine. Which means I would still have to be running some version of Windows in order to run Windows programs, and the whole point of trying to switch to Linux was to get away from Windows. So, if I'm running Windows in a virtual machine, well, I might just as well run Windows on real hardware. And finally, going back to capture devices, it refuses to work with my webcam. However, something that I thought would never work actually did, and that's my video capture device that lets me capture things from, you know, analog cameras, VCRs, things like that. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. So anyway, this video is going to be edited on Kden Live, ironically because I'm just too lazy to switch the hard drives over. But after that, I am done with Linux. I would rather put up with the BS that Windows gives me over the BS that Linux does. At least for now.